Hello and welcome to Law Talk. My name is John Celebrezzi and I'm the co-founder of the Celebrezzi Zangi Community Legal Education Project, as we call it CZ CLEP for short. Our organization provides continuing education about the judiciary and legislature to attorneys, judges, government officials, and the general public. As a career ed educator, I recognize early on how important legal matters are and, and how they impact our lives. I am the nephew of the late Anthony J. Celebrezzi, who was the popular five-term mayor of Cleveland and a member of President Kennedy's cabinets. As a tribute to his lifetime commitment to the legal process, we dedicate this show. John's special guests today are Judge James Kimbler and Medina County's current sheriff, Mr. Tom Miller. Judge Kimbler, Medina County Common Pleas Court has over 29 years in Medina County. Judge needs no introduction as he has seen his share of serious social problems. Medina County's current sheriff, Mr. Tom Miller, who has a distinguished career in law enforcement, is including 12 years as director of the Protective Services for St. Luke's Medical Center and the Metro Health Medical Center. Tom is also a board member of the Medina County Drug Task Force, the Medina County Alcohol and Mental Health Board, and the Medina County Creative Housing Board. Now let's join John and his special Gentlemen, guest. Welcome to Law Talk. Well, thanks for having us. Yeah, thank you, John. Well, you're certainly welcome. Uh, we're very pleased to have Sheriff Tom Miller with us today, and of course, Judge Kimbler, who has visited the show on several occasions. First time for you, Sarah, yes. right? Yeah, it is. Okay. Well, we want you to know your open invitation, so you're welcome to come back anytime you want. Just oh, thanks. So, um, unfortunately, we're going to talk about a topic that I know both of you guys are real concerned about, and not only you two, I'm hearing a lot around the, the courthouse as well as seeing it in my own practice. And apparently this heroin addiction is not getting any better and people, uh, even in our nice community of Medina, it's being impacted. Uh, so, Judge, I know you, you've sort of taken the lead on this. I read a rather interesting article in The Plain Dealer. Uh, so I guess I'll lead off with you. Um, in your opinion, Judge, what is the scope of the heroin problem in our county, in Medina County? Well, the, the heroin is probably a pretty rapidly increasing uh, uh, drug of choice. Uh, and what seems to be kind of uh, scary about it is, is that number one, it seems to be, it, it goes across um, both, both genders, it goes across racial lines, it goes across income lines. Um, nationally, uh, Attorney General Holder said that between 2006 and 2010, there was a 45% increase in heroin overdose deaths. Uh, in Ohio, in uh, uh, 2011, which is the most recent data my probation department uh, had, there were 426 people killed in Ohio by overdose, and 20 people died in 2013. Wow. Uh, locally, we are seeing about, um, well, since June of 2012, the adult probation department of Dinah County has run nearly 1,700 drug screens on defendants, and more than half of those have tested positive for opiates. Now, not all opiate use is heroin use. In other words, if the person, for example, had a prescribed drug of hydrocodone or, uh, or oxycodone, mm -hmm. they, would, they, would, they would show up as being positive for opiates. But probably the majority, the overall majority, I mean, the vast majority of the people that I just mentioned, these, the, the over half of the people of the 1,700 who are testing positive or probably testing positive for illegal use. In other words, either they're using heroin or they're using prescription drugs without a prescription. Um, okay. And I agree with that. And, and what's causing the heroin increase, too, is that it, it provides uh, nearly the same high, cheaper. Yeah. Heroin uh, is being dealt with less than they can get illegal. Uh, you would, it, uh, uh, from a lay person's perspective, Sheriff, you'd almost think it'd be just the opposite. I mean, you would think heroin would be an extremely uh, expensive drug to get a hold of, but apparently that's not the case. No, part, part of it is, is there was a concerted effort to crack down on opiate, illegal use of opiate prescriptions and that. So there's been a, a crackdown at, at the medical level and at the street level, it's made it more difficult. It, it's still occurring. We'll never, you know, truly beat it, but it's been re substantially reduced. I see. And as a consequence, though, the heroin marketeers, if you will, they are business people. There you go. And supply and they, demand, and supply how much? And, demand. and there are times it's a anecdotally, there they have provided it free in some neighborhoods to get people hooked on it now. 
Well, that this idea of getting people hooked is is the the real scary part about. It. I mean, all yeah. drugs have got consequences to them, but uh, once a person is hooked on heroin, they're I understand they're hooked and. Well, it's both psychologically and physically addictive. Yes. As opposed to some drugs, which may only be psychologically addictive. So um, we had a years ago. We had a young lady who was. Uh, we actually she got busted um, for cocaine use, cocaine possession, but it turned out she was actually a heroin addict. And she would maintain a relatively low use of heroin, but continuously break the law um, because uh, one of the reasons was she did not want to get what she referred to as being dope sick. In other words, she didn't want to go cold turkey. She didn't want to go into a stage where she would get uh, uh, detoxed physically and get sick. And her solution was, and she had a boyfriend, I think, who provided uh, heroin to her, her solution was, well, I'll just keep using a little bit of heroin all the time. Um, and it finally took us to, we finally got her into a treatment program, 28-day residential program. And last time we heard, she was doing very well. Um, but I think there's kind of among people maybe who use heroin, they're always afraid of being dope sick. Have you heard that term before? Yeah. And I think they, they may fear that the physical uh, uh, symptoms of, of not using, right? Yes. Yeah, yeah there, there is withdrawal from it, and, and that. The other thing that happens is, if you you know, if you will consider the jail an informal detox sure, center. Sure, sure. Hopefully, they can't get it there. Yeah, yeah. Was my, that was my next question. They, they are, are you seeing an increase in heroin addicted inmates coming to our jail? Well, we are. You are. And anecdotally, I can tell you, I, I think it was 2012, maybe 2011. One of the inmates uh, was a female who had been a user and became clean and was going to go straight, if you will, the first day out she used and died. Oh the first gosh. day after being discharged. Because what happens is with, with heroin is when you're off of it, if you go back to the same level you were using, it can be lethal. And that's why we're seeing these overdoses. Seriously. And you, there's a state of euphoria in using it too, if you will. And that doesn't alarm them. They're yeah. feeling good while they're yeah. dying. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's, exa point. that's exactly what's going on. They were feeling good while they're dying. Yeah. See, wow. the problem you, that we run into is is that right now the Benign County Jail is probably the only detox center we have in Benign County. Yes. In the sense that it's the only place we can put somebody where we know they're not going to get heroin, but it's being done on an informal basis. That is, in order to be detoxed at the jail, first you got to be arrested, then you got to be put in the jail. Then you either got to be confined there and not make bond. Uh, and the problem is, I had a young man the other day who was in front of me for heroin uh, addiction, and his uh, mother, I think his mother or grandmother was with him, and they wanted him out. But the problem was, I said, Look, we're not going to release him until we have some sort of program to put him into. Yeah. Because if you release him without some sort of structure, the chances of him going back to using heroin are pretty great. Sure. Which yeah. Yeah. is the sheriff yeah, could absolutely. be fatal. There was a, again a female being discharged today, and a person that assisted her in getting home came back to me and said, while conversing with that person, she doesn't know one person that isn't a user, family, friends, relationships. The culture they're that she's all using. using. What are the chances of her? getting the help yeah. she needs now that she's discharged unless we formalize some sort of programming. You know, yeah, we, we, had a, we had a probationer one time who was on probation to us and he, had, he was completing some sort of program, um, maybe an vocational program, but he was going to graduate from this program. And he asked his probation officer if he would come to the graduation ceremony. And the officer said, well, why not remember your family? And he said, none of my family supports what I'm doing. Because they're all using. Yeah, sure. They're all using. So he said, none of my family. He said he got no support from his mother, his father, his siblings. They didn't understand why he was doing it. They didn't understand why he wanted to be clean. And so the only person he could rely on to support him in being PO. clean was his PO. Yeah. Wow. Which is kind of sad. Yeah. Really? So, Sheriff, uh, kind of a segue here. Um, we know that, um, well, I knew that you were going to do this, but I, you know, now you've made the visit. Can you describe to our viewers this program you, you actually sure. visited down in Greene County? Well, we visited in Greene County, and they call it, I think, the, the, the Greenleaf uh, Therapeutic Program that they have down there. It's uh, 
a six-month program for females and males that are treated separately because they're kept within the jail I for see. the programming. And they use cognitive behavior therapy. And it's just for the same reasons we're talking about why these people can't get off. They need assistance in changing behaviors or finding other supports after they get out. So they learn how to apply for a job. They have AA or NA, uh, Narcotics Anonymous or Alcoholics Anonymous available to I them see. there. There are group sessions uh, for the people there. There are individual therapy sessions for the people to help give them strength. The other key to the program in Greenleaf and it, uh, is that when they're discharged from the, the program, when I say discharged, they're on probation yeah. for six months. And that's the follow-up. It's a mandatory follow-up or they can end up back in sure, jail, sure. if you will. It's sad that that has to occur. At the same time, there's been success shown, but success w with this type of, these type of people, if you will, is minimal. It doesn't always work the first time. Some of these people end up in these, we call them frequent flyers, yeah. you can call them that too, I yeah. think, you're on, yeah. that are in our courts and are in our ju uh, criminal justice system all the time. They need help in breaking through that cycle. So the six, uh, Toledo University's Criminal Justice Department did a recent study and through the programming like this, you can reduce recidivism by a whopping 7%. Wow. That sounds like a, a low number, no, and, but and it is, but it's right better. Direction. But the people that receive no programming, none, they, they had no success Nothing. with them without coming back. They ended up all back. So there is some success for this to break that cycle. Yeah. And, the, and when you say we're helping these individuals, we're also preventing crime. It's not just the use. They, pr they commit crimes to support their habits. Sure. And some are crimes of violence. It can be a robbery or, or that. Or it can be a breaking and entering, but uh, these crimes, it's a vicious cycle. Most of the crimes that we have in the, in the county are a direct result of alcohol and or drug abuse. Sure. Eighty-five percent of the people in, uh, in the jails nationally and in the prisons are there as a result of alcohol and wow. drug abuse. Judge, or, or Sheriff, when you were down there, did, did you run into your counterpart of Green County Sheriff or somebody? Oh, he was glad to be there, yes. I well, well, I'm no. curious, what did he say? I mean, Sheriff to Sheriff, what, what did he, what was his read on this? Well, that, that it's an issue now, uh, and comparing it to the two counties, they're very proud of their program and how they do it. Uh, I, I'm going to segue a little bit here. You know, uh, right. we're going to end up having to do it a little bit differently, but we've learned a lot from looking at their but program. But I take it, I mean, that sure that, that doesn't help them. Yes, they, they are, they're showing uh, success with those people in that program for the six-month period. Wow. They're only measuring that six months. The study I mentioned from uh, Toledo University measured a five-year time frame, so it's a longer length of time. They're showing a tremendous amount of success in the first six months, okay. near a hundred percent. So. So I think you keep these people yeah. from committing crimes for no, six I, months. I think that's yeah. very encouraging. I, I yeah. laud you for going down there. I guess I, can I make a fair assumption? You don't become sheriff overnight. You are a seasoned person with a great deal of experience to reach the position you're in now. Is that sheriff a person on a, well, a contemporary to you who's seen a lot in their career? He, yes, and he's been in his position a lot longer than I have okay, in but, a position of sheriff. But, yes, but I know you guys network with time. each other. And, you know. and he has the same philosophical belief that it's not just punishment. The, 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 it's called corrections for a reason. It, it, well, <laughs> yeah. it, it, it's, it's encouraging, though, and, and you know, you're collaborating with other people. If there's an idea out there that'll work, I think that's wonderful. Yeah. Um, so, Sheriff, are you interested in bringing this to, to our county, to Montana? Yes, a, a similar program. Now, uh, I, I will say this, you know, and we've met and we've discussed a lot with uh, our alternative paths, which is uh, the mental health and addiction sure. provider, a forensic uh, criminal person, in our jail with, with uh, the judge's probation department. Yeah. Uh, we're probably looking at more like a 30 to 90 day program de depending on the individual. I have a dual purpose. I have chiefs that say, we need your pot open. I have judges that have been so cooperative in restructuring when they sentence people that having this pot open will create 36 beds yeah. in the other part of the jail while at the same time there you go. transferring those that need, need this assistance. 
So there's been a back and forth discussion with the judges and with, with the group that these people too will also need six months probation afterwards. Now what we have discussed and we're trying to see if there's a workaround, I think this is fair to say is probably 50% of our people in the general population, maybe 60, are there on sentence. They're yeah. awaiting trial. We would want to open up our program for those that are not sentenced at this point, but right. that will say they need assistance. And here's why there needs to be a workaround. These type of therapeutic programs also include somewhat of a confession or admission yeah. that you need help. And we have to be cognizant of the fact that we don't want to use, we don't want them to entrap their information. Sure, to be sure, against I, them. I understand. I so there would have to be one, uh, a buy-in yeah. by the courts, a buy-in by the defense attorney, yeah. Yeah. and yeah. that we, we to all make have that to get work. But, that's uh, so that's where it'd be a, a slightly different program. But it would be just as intense, they would be in the one pod. They would be getting about 40, 42 hours of program probably six or seven days a week. I see, very intense. And some would be in individual, there would be those that need GED, they would still get that. There would be the sure. NA type, the narcotics anonymous CAA type. So, uh, leaving, leaving this alone, okay. just, I'm gonna bird walk yeah, just a little bit. No, I, I, think I, I want you to take this as a compliment. I've been practicing criminal law here for several years myself and uh, I've had Veronica Perry on my show and uh, sure. I, I, sometimes I think the general public doesn't know or wouldn't have any reason to know how many other programs we do have available. I mean, I, I have several of my clients that have gotten their GED, and of course I'm a, an educator myself. Mm -hmm. uh, so I mean, it, you, you're doing a lot of good things out there right now. It sounds to me like we could step it up. What's your read on this, Judge? You think it'll work? I think it would work. I think the sheriff is right. It's going to have to take a buy-in by, especially the defense bar, I think it could be critical in this. It would be good to get these people in this program as fast as you can, which is the sheriff is thinking that that's why you want to get them in pre-conviction. Uh, the, the situation is this, is that look, at, statistically I can tell you right now that 90, 95% of criminal defendants are going to end up entering a plea. We just don't know at what point they're going to enter sure. the plea. Yeah. We need to find a system, we need to get the defense bar and, and, the, and the court system to buy into the idea that since statistically 95% of people accused of crime are, and, and in the jail for winning go to court are going to end up pleading guilty, the further we can advance you know, their programming, the better off they're going to be. Um, there's programs similar to this that have been done like in Albuquerque has done a similar program mm -hmm. where they have dealt with people uh, pre-plea, pre, uh, so to speak. Um, th the problem is sometimes you run into in our profession is that um, lawyers are trained a lot in law school for to handle the adjudication process. Sure. They're not really trained to handle the disposition process. Yeah. In other words, they focus on what should happen to their client before the day of sentencing, but after sentencing, they just don't, they don't exactly worry about right. it as much. That's exactly right. That's and how we're trained. And, and, and the problem is, is that actually they're in a position to do a lot of good because they're the one person who the defendant should be able to rely on to look out for the defendant's best sure. interest. And sometimes the best interest of the defendant is not to contest the, the matter. Sometimes the best uh, of interest of the defendant is to get into a program. I see. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah. Well, yeah. I, on the subject of programs, I mean, this is in your 29 years you've been on the bench, right? I mean, been we Almost. Took, uh, yeah, over 28. Uh, uh, I mean, you've had, not only have I reported on some, had you on the show, I mean, I know firsthand, but uh, you've had a lot of innovative programs come out of your court over your long tenure as a judge, and one of them is drug court. Yeah, we have a drug court program we're doing right now that is well, up I mean, for state certification. And but how does this... How would this work? Yeah, how does it interface? Well, what you would do is, what we would see happening is, is that they would go do the, the, the program in the jail for a period of time. And then when they got out, they'd go into our drug court program where they'd be on intensive supervised probation, have a lot of meetings oh, with I us, see. things like that. So we would see the program as, we would see the sheriff's program as, as the first stage and in getting them, you know, the idea would be they'd come out detoxed and have programming already, and then it'd be easier for us to maintain them in drug court. I see. And, and so they will interface. Yeah, they, they, oh, yeah, they would interface. Judge, Judge Collier has a drug court as well. Yes, that's correct. Um, I'm not as familiar with the, that programming as I am what we're, yeah, what sure, we're doing in our own courtroom. But the other thing that should be mentioned here is that the Bonanne County Sheriff's Office 
uh, for several years uh, under Sheriff Hassinger and Sheriff Reber, I think, and under Sheriff Miller, have been very good about having mental health services at the jail, yeah. have been very good about having uh, drug addiction services at the jail. Alternative paths has been, as the sheriff mentioned, has been, has been providing care, uh, treatment for these people. So the, the Medina County Jail is not just the place where we warehouse people. No. You know? No, it's not. And, and what, what I've tried to tell people is, this is one of my lines I like to use, is, you know, if I'm in a group, say, anybody, uh, where do you think these people come from? You know, no hands go yeah. up. And yeah. then I'll say, right. well, does anybody have a, a, know somebody that might be in our jail and a couple of hands go up like sure. this? And I'll say, they're our neighbors. They're mm -hmm. our neighbors. When they leave here, would you like them to be better neighbors yeah. than when they right. came in? So part Obviously. of all this is, is, and it's cost effective. It's, it's uh, if it was a business model, there would be, if we were in the you know peer business, say yes, yeah. do this because it's going to save us money sure. long term. Yeah. But it, but people want so much other things out of a criminal justice yeah. system than just that. So Judge, the term, uh, go ahead. Well, you sure. No, I, I, no, no, that's uh, this. I mean, I'm, I'm going to ask you a question. Is this going to? Yeah. I mean, you, it, it, my viewers, lay people, myself, to agree. We've been throwing the word detox out here. I mean, mm -hmm. we say. So I want to ask you a question. What does it mean? When an inmate at the jail detoxes, he is no longer physically addicted, right? That, well, go ahead. They, they, they dry up, if you yeah. will. And I, I use alcohol. Alcohol is one of the actually most dangerous yeah. ones to withdraw from. So, so some of it it's medically supervised at our place. Our correction officers are well aware of when yeah. somebody's detoxing. Our uh, uh, medical staff and and our. our forensic staff, uh, alternative paths again are well aware and know when they need assistance. On occasion, we've had, it, especially with the alcohol ones, I've had to ship them to the hospital while they're mm -hmm. detoxing. But this other part of the program can't occur until they're detox, right. depending so on the nature of so how detox deep is a physical thing. I mean, oh, absolutely. Yeah. So physical and mental, like the so, judge mentioned earlier. So the but, inmate comes in, he's been abusing all over the place, he finally gets arrested, and he, he comes into your facility. Yeah. He's going to be sick for a while. I mean, I guess that'd be one depending, way of saying it. Depending on what they're addicted to. Yeah. Okay. Different ones have yeah. different things. Well, is there, I guess it leads but, me to another question then, Sheriff. Is there currently any formal detox programs available uh, uh, for inmates in, in well, the diner? Do we have For any? inmates in the sense that you're already yeah, providing. Yeah, yeah. All yeah. Right. But in terms of, let's, uh, <coughs> excuse me. The, the the short answer is no. The long yeah. as, longer answer is they're available in Summit, Lorraine, I see. Yeah. Cuyahoga County, so and people that aren't prisoners, if you are yeah. inmates, do go to these detox centers surrounding us. But there is not a detox center per se within Medina County. So we really if do you, need. It, it, yeah, I mean the sad thing is, if you had a relative who was physically addicted to heroin, and not heroin a criminal use, somehow, a criminal, except for the use, yeah. You, if he wasn't a criminal, you might want him or she to become a criminal so that they could actually yeah. get detox in the jail because there's no place to put him without being yeah. in the yeah. criminal justice system. That's interesting. I mean, it's something that most of us would not think about. And, you know, so that, when yeah. we say 30, 60, 90 days, it's after they're detoxed, they would yeah. get transferred yeah. to this, yeah. uh, I'll call it a therapeutic pod for lack sure. of a better word right well, now. Therapy, that's a perfect one. But heroin addiction is not a urban problem. It's also a suburban problem. Well, I guess yeah. that's going to lead me to what apparently going to be one of my last questions, Judge. I wasn't going to let you get out of here because I don't know whether I'll see you again as a judge. <laughs> but, I mean, I'll yeah. see you again, obviously. But with 29 years on the bench, Medina County, you've seen your share of social problems. Uh, uh, how do you rate the spike in heroin addi addiction against others that you've dealt with? I mean, obviously, over a lot of years. Well, that's, that's a good question because Brian and Perry and I were tossing it around one day. Um, drugs go through, like, for, for there was a, a um, exam for a while, there was a lot, a lot of cocaine use, and there was a lot yeah. of meth use, and there was a lot of heroin use. I think probably in terms of death overdose, I think the heroin problem is probably more acute than either the cocaine or meth was. Yeah. Um, and the other problem is is that it, it seems to be a problem that's increasing uh, because heroin is relatively cheap. Yeah, as the, and sheriff, as the sheriff mentioned, also um, 
a lot of people start a lot I mean a lot of our users start out on legal drugs and when they can't get them anymore they go to heroin because they're smart enough to know heroin's an opiate derivative this is an opiate derivative so you know I would say that probably um, from my perspective as a judge the heroin epidemic is probably one of the bigger problems I've seen really yeah I mean it, it, because it's got consequences that it can be fatal and it leads, as the sheriff already pointed out, it leads to more crime. People do other crimes to, to feed to have it. So we got ourselves a first rate problem here. We have ourselves, I mean, is it as bad in our county as it is in others? No. But do we want it to get worse? No. Yeah. So I would say we have a problem. Okay. Your feelings? I'd, I'd have to agree with sure. them over the years, and I started in Brunswick in 1974. You know, there was the glue sniffing, yeah. there was the uh, high marijuana use, and uh, then the cocaine was the drug of choice for a long time. But heroin it, it is creating more deaths. Heroin is cheap. It's readily available. Yeah. We don't think about it in our generations because it wasn't yeah. there. Sure. But our t I'm, most high school kids, they aren't users. I don't, I don't mean to say that. I'm not trying to alarm yeah. any parents. Know that it yeah. knows somebody that knows how to get it. Yeah, that's a good point. Well, gentlemen, this has been very informative for me, and I hope very much the same for my my uh, my viewers. Uh, thank you so much well, for being you. my guest, and no, you're always welcome back. Well, thank you for well, having thanks us. Thanks for having us. Be glad to come back. Comments made by John's guest on Law Talk are solely those of his guest and do not necessarily reflect the views of Celebrezzi Zangi Community Legal Education Project. To view this show and others, go to www.cdzclep.org. In the Wandsworth area, a complete listing of dates and times of this broadcast, tune in to WCTV Channel 15 or log on to wandsworthcity.com and follow the links to WCTV. At CZ Clip, we're devoted to the education of today's legal issues. Fueled by the public's keen interest in our legal system and current events, CZ Clip is dedicated to the educational venues aimed at enhancing the understanding by all citizens, regardless of age, education, occupation, or wealth. A function of the Celebrezzi Zangi Community Legal Education Project.